I'm a couple of minutes early, so I'm just trying to see how the uh, how the audio and video is working today. <laughs> you just never know with this stuff how it's going to work out. So don't worry. Hey, how you doing, Brian? <laughs> It's working good? Well, that's good to hear. That's awesome. Hey, John. Nice to hear from you, buddy. Glad you could make it. Huh. Brian says, I think you got a bad ground cord somewhere. Hey, AR. Crappy sound for you, John. Man. Hmm. Let me just take a minute. That's why I'm here. Hey, Jack. Hey, guys. Yeah, it's not a bad chord. Oh, it's, it's choppy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that. We'll just do it the old way. Randy says, how's the foot? Can you hear my... Yeah, it's not the chord, Brian. It's, it's not the chord. The chord is perfectly fine. Um... Okay, so let's see here. Audio is breaking up. Okay, give me a second. Let me try something else. Just hold on, guys. Before you before you disconnect, let me try something else quick here. This is what we did last time. We'll try this. Hold on a second. Ugh. Okay, we'll try this here and see if this works. Check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, one, two. Okay, is that too loud? Check, 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 check. Check. Hey, Ed. Hey guys. Okay. Okay. Let me know if that works for you, okay? Yeah, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I got the mic over here, so I'll try and talk kind of towards this way. Um, yeah, uh, Chuck Berry, obviously in, incredible influence on, on rock and roll, and it's, it's a shame, although he did live to be 90, and I would love to be able to live that long for sure. So, um, so that's good. But yeah, it's funny when you think about the fact that some of these people, like rock and roll is only as old as like, our grandparents right or, or maybe even our parents and um, it's it's pretty amazing that it's still such a young such a young thing it's I'm pretty proud to be a part of it for sure and, and I hope you are too okay cool sorry about that hopefully you can hear me okay and everything it looks like we got this fixed okay okay um, so let me just say hello to everybody again. Thank you so much for taking time out to hang out with me tonight. Um, I've got something kind of neat that I thought I would show you this evening uh, that you could maybe implement in your playing a little bit. It's not bluesy. Uh, I tend to talk about a lot of blues stuff because I know people like it and it's very easy to implement into uh, your playing for different things. But I thought tonight what I would do is I would show you a little trick that I use a lot when I'm doing my... I could call them arpeggios, but I don't think about them like that. More just when I want these um, 
when the I want these kind of elongated patterns to happen. So what I thought I'd do is show you how I use them and how you can actually use them in multiple keys, and it functions the same way no matter what. Okay. So um, anyway, again, thank you everybody for being here for taking time out in your day. Um, let me know where you are, uh, where you are at right now. Let me know what city or what state you're in right now. Okay. Uh, that way I can kind of see where everybody is. I think somebody was on here that was at the uh, meet and greet last Tuesday. And if there is anybody on here that was at that meet and greet, I want to say again, thank you so much for taking time out again to uh, come look at my ugly mug for a while and hang out and chat. It was really, really fun. Uh, I had a really good time. So there we go. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, and while you got those coming in, cool. There you go. Columbus, Cleveland, New Orleans. Cool. Detroit Lakes, formerly Clear Lake, Iowa. Cool. West Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, Wisconsin. <laughs> St. Paul, Minnesota, and the grass is actually green, Jeremy says. Actually, ours isn't green, but we can see the grass for, for once in the middle of March, which is kind of nice. Cool. British Columbia, cool. New York. Okay, so here's my deal. Um, I, was, I was out in... California last week and uh, I got together with some of the guitar zoom people and actually had met them for the first time I've been with Bruce says I'm a buzz bison alumni that's awesome go bison uh, Dan and I have gotten together many times but it was cool because we were able to to um, to meet with like Tom who's from Croatia and Althea who's from uh, Sweden and then Derek, who's actually from Arkansas, we've, we've gotten together with Derek a few times. But it was really neat. And I just want you to know that one of the things, <laughs> John says Dan needs to shave. We all think Dan needs to shave, but Dan does not think so. Uh, and his wife likes it, so he's, he's fine. Um, but here's what I'm going to do is in 2018, I'm going to try and set up four live events around the United States. Now, I know some of you are from, from outside the United States, and, um, and I've got that on the list too, but my game plan in 2018 is to set up four live events, um, and then that way we can, you know, you may have to do a little bit of traveling as I will too, but we'll try and centralize them as best we can to try and hit uh, the four corners of the states as best we can. Um, and of course, I mean, we'll figure it out, but here's the deal. I was hoping to do that this year, but I just got done with the surgery. Somebody asked how the foot's doing. I'm actually in a in a sock, um, and I'm taking it. I was going to have this, the surgery on my other foot next week, but that's not going to happen because the, the, the uh, healing on this foot is going too slow. So I'm actually going to postpone this foot until later on this year and do it then. So my plan is, is between now and, you know, like this summer, you start planning on, where to come and see all of you. That's the big thing, is, is how to set this up. And uh, so what I want you to do is, um, I don't have an email address because it's just off the top of my head, but I have some ideas of what I want this live event to be, okay? Not just to get together, which is great because I, I certainly want to meet you, but I want to give you more than just that. So I've got some ideas of what I want to do, but I'd be more than willing to take your ideas too, but just not on this live event or this QA. Um, so I think what we need to do is maybe I will set up a survey and post it somewhere and you guys could let me know some ideas of what you'd like to see in a live. I'll just give you kind of what I'm thinking. I don't want to waste your time, but I'll just give you an idea of what I was thinking. What I would love to be able to do, I know some of you get to perform live, but many of you don't or you have performed live, but it doesn't happen very often. What I would love to be able to do is to have a full on, I don't know if I can make it work, it's, it's all in the early stages, but a full on rock and roll show for you. So like, you, I, I would have a band that you would play with, including me, and you get to pick a song that you wanna play, and we'll back you on it, we'll, we'll have lights and the full PA and fog and the whole nine yards, and we'll videotape it and people could come out and see it. And um, so what we would do is we would spend a day or two prepping to get you ready, you know, work on your song, work on your solo, give you some ideas, things like that. Um, and then what you would do is the next day we would, we would go perform. And, and it might even be something like where 
if there's a lot of people, maybe two of you would play in a band together, and I would not play. I would just sit out there and cheer. Um, so maybe we'd have two two uh, club members, for instance, that are playing together in a band with, again, a full band, and have the whole thing and videotape it and then get you a, a copy of it. Everybody gets a copy of their performance, so you'd have it. Um, and that way you're just, you know, take, take the, the stress off of all this stuff and let you do something really, really fun um, that's just just for you. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. I got to, <laughs> Brian says, can I use the stick? Yes, Brian, you could use the stick. Uh, yeah, I think it sounds really neat too. And I mean, again, the whole point is, is we're just having a lot of fun and we're making music together. So instead of just doing a you know, question and answer, which I, I love that stuff too, but if we get a lot of people there, let's say 50 people show up, it's really hard to do that because then the entire time is spent answering questions. And not that I don't like that. I could still answer your questions, but we'd be prepping for some other things. So maybe we'd have different teams. Okay, so let me figure it out. But I would, I would be all about hearing your ideas too for something. But that's, um, you know, you guys know that my goal is, is to get away from just being on video and actually come and see you on a regular basis and work with you and, and figure out what you need face to face. You know, that's what I love most anyway, um, is, you know, teaching and helping face to face so it'll be really cool so anyway let me show you what I was thinking today that would be really fun hopefully you all have your guitar handy unless you're at work and you're gonna get in trouble then you probably don't but if you've got your guitar handy what I want you to do is grab it and let me show you something that's kinda cool okay and this is gonna be more of a minor thing but it certainly works in a major sense too what I like to do it, it, a lot of you know when I'm playing solos, I tend to mix a lot of different things together. But one of the things I really like to use is what I call intervallic movement. Okay, now intervallic movement is when you do things where instead of just playing up a scale, okay, let me know if that's too loud or anything, okay? So instead of just doing something like that, which sounds just fine, what I like to do is I like to make it more intervallic and the way I do that is I jump over notes or even jump over strings so I might do something okay where I'm jumping over ideas like stuff like that okay now, this isn't going to be exactly that, but what I want to show you is something that I like to use a lot, and let me just show it to you. So let's say we're in the key of E. So we've got a rock thing going, or a metal thing, or anything like that, and I do this lick. Okay? Now, I can slow up and I can speed up or slow down in different parts. But what I'm doing is I'm really just moving across the, uh, the guitar, right? And what I want to do is I'm going to show you how you can use that in two different keys that are really, really easy, are really common keys. We could actually use it in our major as well. And what it really comes down to is kind of like, uh, I don't remember if that was Rock Band or whatever game that was, where when you play the drums, all you had to do is hit the drums a ton. And as long as you hit like the cymbal or whatever on the last beat, it all fit. And then you got like bonus points <laughs> or something like that. Something like that. Anyway. It's kind of the same point here, okay? The lick itself fits in multiple keys in multiple situations. It's the last note that you play that really brings it together to be in a particular key. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of this. Uh, Randy says it sounds a little like Eric Johnson. Yeah, it, it has a, a lot of flavor of a lot of different things. And um, and that's, that's why I use these. I, I like... You know, it's, it's, for me, it's got like a kind of a... Malmsteen or Vi kind of thing to it, you know. Um, so let me show you this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go uh, to the seventh fret of the fifth string, and I want you to play with your pinky. I want you to play that seven on the fifth string, and then you're going to go to the fifth fret of the fourth string with your middle finger. Okay, so you're playing seven and then five. And then you're going to play four on the third string. Brian's laughing at Guitar Hero. I know, I know. But, but you'll see why once we get there. So we have seven, five, four. 
Now, if you know anything about your theory, you can see that what I'm playing right there is actually the the uh, the notes of an E minor chord. Okay, so needless to say, this is going to fit in E minor. But here's what I want you to also think about: if I was playing A minor pentatonic, I get that note right there, which is the note that we're talking about—the seventh fret of the fifth string. I also get the five on the fourth string. That's part of my pentatonic as well. Now I don't get the four, but if you've learned any stuff from me before, you know I talk a lot about the ninth, which is that note right there. It's a very melodic note to play when you're using in your when you're in the key of A minor. So we're just using those three notes. So we could look at those three notes that we're playing as part of an E minor triad or the key of E minor, but they could also fit very nice in the key of A minor. Okay, so you've got so if you can do that with me, play seven, five, four, and they're all down picked. So if you've ever done any arpeggio work, that's what we're doing is we're really just trying to roll the pick through. Okay, because if we want to make this faster, we don't want to like what I call chicken picking, which is where you try and do this sort of thing, where you like it looks like you're pecking like a chicken. You don't want to do that because it takes too long. You want to learn to push through. Now, there's a, you have to learn to synchronize the hands, and so we're not really worried about how fast you do it right now. We just want to work with what it sounds like. Because even when it's slow, it sounds very melodic. Okay, so we've got 754. Let me know if you've got that, if that makes sense so far. 754. Okay, so just practice that for just 30 seconds, and if you've already practiced it, tell me that you, that makes sense to you. Say yes if you got it, okay? That way we're ready to go. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let, it, Brian says, isn't that the same as a second? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, isn't it the same as a second of what? Okay, we'll come back to that, okay? So everybody seems like they got it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slide up to the ninth fret of the third string. And we're going to play nine on the third string with our third finger, eight on the second string with our middle finger, and seven on the first string with our first finger. Now they're just octaves of each other. I'm just doing octaves. So what I do is after I play seven, five, four, I slide up to the nine with my third finger and I play okay so I have okay so I'm playing them going down 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 that's how I'm playing it okay now if you get it oh Brian says I thought a ninth is the same as a second it is the ninth is the same as a second the only, the only reason they're called two different things, the ninth and the second, is it has to do with the terminology within a chord. But in, a, in, in practical terms, a ninth and a second are the same thing, Brian. They are. Okay? Okay, so there's our first part. Okay, now, if you like to play it faster and it's hard for you to play down, 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 up, what, or excuse me, down, 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 what you can do is you can play down, down, down for, through the 7-5-4. And then when you come back up, you can play an up on that nine and then a down, down on the remainder. So if you watch my picking hand here, I'm going to do this nice and slow. I'm going down, up, down, down. Okay. So again, we're just playing those same three notes, which is either the triad, E minor. Okay. Jake says 754 starts on the A string. It does, on the seventh fret of the fifth string, on the A string. Yep, and then five, and then four, and then we move to 987 starting on the third string. Now, before we go any further, understand that just that much could make for a really great little movement if you went. You know, whatever it is, 
you could come out of that, that we're going to call this an arpeggio because that's what it is, but you could come out of that into a bend and it would sound great. You know, whatever it is that you'd like to do, okay? Again, the beauty of it is you're shaking up the normal things that you might play, which is like the box of a pentatonic or something like that, or playing through a scale, you know, like that. You're, you're, just, you're just breaking up the monotony is really what you're trying to do. Now, here's where it gets a little bit weird, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to play that 754, 987, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide up to the 12th fret, okay? Now, when I slide up, I'm not sliding from like a, an 8 or a 9 or a 10. If you want it to be, you know, correct for the scale, you'd want to slide from the 10 on up. But I'm just doing, if you've heard me talk about it, I'm doing an airplane slide. So I'm just coming in anywhere and just sliding up so you don't hear the note I'm sliding from. I'm just, I'm just sliding into that 12th fret. If I was saying 10, I'm sorry. I'm sliding into the 12th fret. But if you wanted to slide from something theoretically correct, you'd want to slide from the 10. Okay? So there it is. Now, here's the problem. I'm now on my third finger on the 12th fret of the first string. So all of my strength is sitting over here on this side of my guitar. I want to keep going. So what I'm going to do is something completely different just to fill some space. I'm going to come down this... And I'm going to play 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, just like pentatonic. Okay? So, again, I'm just using this as a strategy because I want to keep going up the guitar, but all my fingers are on this side at this point. Okay? So I'm going... And I'm doing those as pull-offs, guys. That's how I'm doing it. So I'm doing 12, 10, pull-off. 12, 10, pull off, and then 12. And that 12 right now is going to be my slide point to continue on. Okay? So here's what I got. Okay? So take a second. Make that make sense to you. And please remember that even though I'm playing it steady right now, if I was using this in, in a realistic situation, I might use you know, again, many of you have heard me talk about like the mountain thing where, you know, when you're going up the mountain, you're going a slower and then you come down the mountain, you're going faster. So I use this kind of movement when I play where I might speed up right there. Uh, John says, am I picking at the end? Are you talking about the 12? If you're talking about the 12th fret of the third string, I am picking that. So I'm picking the 12, 12, 12. Okay? So I'm picking the 12 each time and then I'm doing pull-offs. But adjust it as needed for you guys to be able to play this, right? So if you want to pick them all or you want to do something a little bit different, all downstrokes in the end, they are for me, John, because I'm pulling off in between. And even to be honest with you, sometimes I might do the second string as an upstroke. So I might go down on the first string, up on the second string, down on the first string, or excuse me, the third string just out of convenience, but I don't have to do that. So I'm playing this 12 as a down, this 12 as a down or an up, kind of depends on what I feel like, and then this 12 as my down. So you'll see if I play it nice and slow, I might play down, 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 or I might play down, up, down. Okay? So I'm going, okay? So let me know if that makes sense so far, okay? We don't have much left to go, and then I'm going to show you a couple other things that you can do to twist this around. Brian says it doesn't matter how you pick it. It doesn't, okay? That's really the whole point is trying, like with everything that you do, it's trying to figure out when, like for me, I don't have a shutoff switch of when I go from picking everything to slurring things. I don't. I don't do that. It just it just kind of moves in and out. So sometimes, depending on the lick, I might be doing very minimal picking, and sometimes I'm doing a lot of picking. Um, uh, Ed says, "Could I tab this?" If you're talking to me, Ed, I I will not, <laughs> I won't tab it out. That's 
that's never my job. I always have somebody that taps my stuff out. And these things I always do beforehand, you know, because obviously today I was working on guitar course stuff and things like that. So I just come up with something that I'm going to help you with. But again, if we ever have someone in the in the group that would be interested in being a notator and notate these videos out, all I got to do is watch it and kind of write it down as we go. So, or even just do like you know Jason Becker and those guys used to do and just draw a picture of, you know, like write six lines on a piece of paper and then just write down the tab that way too. There's lots of ways you can do this. So we've got seven five four nine eight seven. We've got our slide up and then our pull offs. Okay, now I'm on the 12, on the third string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide up to the 14, and I'm going to do 14, 13, 12. So it's the same shape I did on 7, 8, and 9, but I'm now on 14, 13, 12. So again, in my head, I'm not locked, uh, and I'll explain the theory behind it in just a second, but understand, please understand. I'm not locking myself into going, well, it's E minor this, or it's A minor this, or it's G major this, and so I'm not allowed to do, I'm allowed to do anything I want to do because it's music, okay? It's just, it, so a lot of times as guitar players, we learn things relative to shapes or how something sounds or things like that. So David says, is this entire lick so far all in E minor pentatonic? No, it's not an E minor pentatonic, it's in E minor. It's an E minor diatonic. Otherwise, we wouldn't get, um, if we were in E minor, uh, we wouldn't get, we'd get the root and the third. Let's see. Could it be? Yeah, we could look at it as being an E minor pentatonic. We could look at it as being an E minor pentatonic. Let's, let's, let's look at what we've got so far, and let's, let's try and think about this as both E minor and A minor. Okay, so E minor, we've got, there's our triad, there's our triad, there's our pentatonic, then we move up, and right there you're going to notice it sounds completely different tonally because now I'm making an A minor triad. I'm playing 14, 13, 12. Same shape I had down here, seven, I was doing 9, 8, 7. I'm doing 14, 13, 12. It's an A minor triad, but it fits in the key of E minor. It fits both E minor pen, uh, E minor pentatonic. This one doesn't fit. You'd want a B to be pentatonic E minor. And I'm not doing that. I'm using a C. So that note right there, again, in theory, would put us in E minor diatonic. But please understand, I'm not looking at it that way, OK? So, if we think about what I was talking about before with being an A minor and using the ninth, well, this was just A minor, pentatonic with the ninth. This is A minor, pentatonic with the ninth. This is just pentatonic. There's nothing wrong with any of those notes. Okay? If we were in A, this 12 would not fit pentatonically, though. This 12, it'd have to be a 13 to fit pentatonically and I'm not doing that. Again, I don't care. It still fits diatonically though, okay? So let me play the whole thing for you, so in case you're bored with theory, you don't have to worry about this. So I'm gonna go. See how cool that sounds? Now what I want you to notice is when I play that 12, I'm not resting on it. I'm taking off right away. into 14, 13, and 12. Now, this is where it gets really cool. If you were playing in A minor and you wanted to use this lick, what we need to do now is the guitar hero thing where we need to find the right note at the end, okay? Because we just ended. Now, I could end on this and I'd be fine. This could be fine. It's just not that exciting for me. So what I want to do is I want to go up to the A. So I'm going to make my way up to that note A, which is the 17th fret of the first string. So I'm going 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, three notes. Coming down the pentatonic, sliding here from 12 to 14, and then doing 1, 2, 3, and then ending on the A. So I have... Let me 
play it up to speed a little bit. Now, let's see, Jake says the final thir 14, 13, 12 would be G, B, and E. No, it'd be G, it, it'd be uh, A. Oh, you're talking the strings? Yes, it'd be the strings, third, second, and first strings. Yes, G, B, and E. I'm playing 14, 13, 12. So I'm playing those three strings. My notes, Jake, obviously, would be A, C, and E. They're outlining an A minor arpeggio, or A minor triad, excuse me. And then I'm ending on that A. So again, just take a few seconds and try and kind of get, don't worry about how fast it is. Don't make it into an exercise right away. Okay, just try and start with and don't worry about the phrasing because the phrasing is going to change and we're going to talk about that in just a second. First thing I want you to do is I just want you to see how this is connecting together. Okay, Brian says it will help me a lot more as to notation. It might help others too. That's true, Brian, but I need you to try and learn how to see things too. So when you're with somebody and you're learning how to play something impromptu, Brian, you don't have to say, you know, do you have something you can, you don't do that. Try and get used to being able to see it. We're in no hurry here, Brian. It's okay. We're in no hurry. We got 30 more minutes to try and absorb this thing. And the hope is, is once we get done, you guys are going to be able to use this in some capacity in whatever it is that you like to do. So if we were playing an E minor, a lot of times we always think we want to come right up here. And we want to play pentatonic, which is great. It's wonderful. We want that. But to be able to come from a pentatonic lick and then go into it sounds super cool. Okay? Let's see. John says, could you incorporate the harmonics at 12 as a way to re-emphasize the tonality? Not sure what you mean by that, John, as in G, B, and E. These three notes? If that's what you mean, you could do anything you want. If that works for you, John, that's awesome. <laughs> John says, but how does it sound in the PRS? It sounds pretty good. Okay, so... Uh, Michael says, all over E minor so far, you got it. So let's do this. Uh, Jake says, I missed what happens after 14, 13, 12. After 14, 13, 12, Jake, we're just sliding up to the 17th fret of the first string, which is A. Okay? That's... Now, please understand, I should, I should reiterate that, Jake. If I'm sliding up to the 17th fret, it's giving me the note A. So what I want to do is, in this case, I want to be in the key of A. Like, let's say I was playing something in A, and I went... That entire thing, even though it's technically an E minor triad, is going to sound wonderful over an A, because those two notes are part of the, the key of A. And this note is also part of the key of A, but it's the ninth, which is also, it's just an incredibly wonderful color tone. So my point here is you're learning how to play a lick that really should exist in E minor, in some sort of E minor chordal thing. But when you play it in A, it sounds really, really cool. Okay? Brian says the patterns will stay the same in general. Absolutely. Okay? So let's say we wanted to be actually... First of all, let me make sure that uh, that makes sense to you guys. So my N note is an A because I'm in the key of A. I'm doing something in A. And I'm throwing in this really cool little thing, right? So I'm, I've been playing these kind of things, and then all of a sudden I go, and I build this. And it doesn't have to be lightning fast, guys. Please understand. I know I play them fast sometimes because I like, I like the sound of it, but they don't always need to be like that. Okay? So, um, so that's, that's if you're playing in the key of A. Let's say we were actually playing in the home key of E. We're playing an E minor. Okay? So we got something going in E, right? So now we do the exact same thing. But instead of sliding up to the 17th fret, which is A, I'm going to slide up to the 19th fret, which is B. 
or I could bend the 17th fret. I'm going to slide up to the 19th fret though, which is B. And if you know anything about your theory, B is the fifth of the E minor triad. So I'm going to a note that is part of the E minor chord. So I'm going exact same thing, but I'm in the key of E going. And I'm going up to that 19, which fits really nice over that sound of E. If I could hit it, there we go. Okay, so that might be something that I would do. Again, the end of this lick is completely variable. We could do a million different things, okay? We could do a million different things with this. So, uh, <laughs> Michelle says, I don't have a 19th fret. That's okay. You could do something like this. Let's say you went like this, Michelle. You went... And you bent the 15th fret of the uh, second string. You could end it like that. You can end it any way you like. That's the beauty of it. Like, let's say I did the lick, right? And I didn't want to just end. I don't just want to go to a note and be done, right? I'm in the middle of my solo, and this is just a lick that I'm going to use, and I want to keep going. So I do this lick. And I come down some other way. I come down my pentatonic, OK? in E or A or whatever it is that I want to be in. So the point is, is that number one, it makes for a really melodic lick that you might not already be playing. Number two, it can be used in various different keys. And again, if you know anything about your theory, if you can play this in E minor, you can also play this in G major. But the last note may have to be edited, like on Guitar Hero, right? If you're playing in A minor, you could also be in the key of C major and this would still work. It would work just fine in C major. But again, the end of it is going to have to come out and do something rock bandish where it's going to it's going to be compatible with whatever's going on with your music. Okay? So yeah, Randy says lots of frets on that. Yeah, there's 24 frets on this one. You know, I opened for uh Uli John Roth about 3 weeks ago and he his guitar, I don't even know how many how many frets he's got on that thing, but there's got to be like on the high end, there's got to be like 36 frets. I think he's got three octaves on that thing. The whole guitar doesn't. It goes it goes really wonky like this, and it goes way down, and he's got, I'd be willing to bet, like 36 frets on that thing. It's pretty crazy. Okay? So, anyway, if that makes sense to you, that's something that you could really do. Now, Brian says interval, intervals, that's the whole key. Yeah, the whole key always is variety. Always try and think... Yeah, Brian, you're cool. The, the whole thing is variety. What, what happens a lot of times when people are playing guitar is they see things on the guitar and therefore they're playing things the same way all the time. And the goal is to try and break out of that and look for something new. Now, again, if, if you're like a lot of people, you're going to look at this, what I'm showing you, and you're going to go, okay, well, how does that fit in a key and how does it fit in a scale and what can I do here? And that's great, but don't lose the fire of what you could do with this lick. Because if you just overanalyze it too much, because it all fits logically, but, but, and there's nothing wrong with, with analyzing it, but sometimes what we do as humans is we forget about the spontaneity of, of something and how exciting something sounds because we're always trying to figure out why it works. Um, and I don't know if this exactly relates to this, but I remember when I was in college, um, my professor, my junior year, I'll never forget this, he said to me, he goes, Steve, the, the real... How did he say it? Um, the real understanding that you are, in fact, a musician is when you can start listening to music and just enjoy it. And what he meant by that was we're not always, and I'm still not there, but we're able to listen to music for the pure enjoyment of it. We're not always trying to psychoanalyze everything. That's when we come around to, to kind of being a full-rounded musician, I think was his point. And... Um, when it comes to guitar, you know, there were there were years that I learned how to play that if I was in a scale, nothing else was uh, was legal. I wasn't I, I it, and again, yes, I knew that, but in my mind I never did anything outside the normal lines. So, it was always just, you know, if I'm in this pentatonic scale, there's nothing else I can do or if I'm in this diatonic scale, that's all I get. And 
you kind of forget that it's all the stuff that isn't that that makes your playing sound unique. Now that doesn't mean you want to play wrong notes, but maybe it kind of does too. You know what I mean? If you can sell it, that's that's the whole thing with really great guitar players. I think you you can hear them sell things that aren't right. They don't make any sense. You know, and again, even I'm not going to get all philosophical on you, but if we even think about blues, blues in itself doesn't make any sense. The fact that we can play four dominant or three dominant seventh major chords and solo minor pentatonic over the top doesn't make any sense at all. But when we do it, it sounds awesome. John says, take chances. That's exactly right. So with this idea here, it's going to be easy for your brain to go, okay, it's E minor, so I, I can only use it in E minor. Where we, what I want you to think about is if it can be used in E minor, it can also be used in G major because they're relative major and minor. If it can be used in A minor, it can also be used in C major. It's how you round it up at the end, right? When you come off here... Like right there, if you, if you can kind of internalize that sound... I should probably give you an F sharp though. You see, I could use it all kinds of different ways. And again, I don't have to use the entire thing. Like what, what I learned how to do a long time ago, which was really beneficial for me, was to be able to look at a bigger picture thing and then chop it in pieces and just use pieces of it. So I might just use this. Or I might just use this. Right? Or I got that little thing here. I might do something where I try and connect this 987 and 12, 14, 13, 12 together. And just make something out of that. You see? So there's a ton of different ways that you can approach this stuff where, again, if you're like me, the first thing you do is you grab a new lick and then you just beat it to death with technique, trying to get it as fast as humanly possible. And I'm not saying that's bad. I think I, I love it, but sometimes we miss the point in doing that. Where if I added a really nice, you know, delay to this, which I got a little bit on here, but you know, if I you know, I could I could kind of play around all over this place with that sort of thing. Randy says, what is the extended minor pentatonic? Well, it depends on how you mean that, Randy. In my term, when I say like pentatonic extensions, what I'm talking about isn't the fretboard itself. The fretboard is the fretboard. We learn how to play like A minor pentatonic across the entire thing or E minor pentatonic across the entire thing. For me, when I talk about extending a pentatonic, I'm talking about adding in more notes to the pentatonic, which ultimately winds up making it what we call diatonic or do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do. So if I'm in, for instance, like well, that's what we're doing right now, Randy, is if I was in A minor pentatonic, if I was just in that A minor pentatonic, but I added in this note, so if I added in that one note, Randy, by adding in that seventh fret into my pentatonic, it makes it sound way, 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 way more interesting. You see? So, yeah, no worries. I mean, that's the thing is, with all this stuff that you guys learn, and I know I was talking to some people about this at the meet and greet out in San Diego, but, you know, the, the most important thing is not to try and utilize every little bit of information that you get because it just becomes overwhelming. Like, we just get lost in the whole thing. The, the big thing is, is, is trying to learn how to take an idea and I, I don't know if there's anybody on this call that understands, but I've had ideas that are fleeting. Like, I'll learn something, and I can just barely, <laughs> you know, I'm just barely getting it. And then, you know, the speaker stops talking, and then I go, oh, and it, and it leaves, and I'm gone, right? So the, the trick here is, is trying to take those things, if it's really worth something worth exploring, and trying to figure out how to actually use it, right? Please, please, please don't just turn this into 754987, right? Try and understand that it is part of a scale. It is. It doesn't matter if you can see it all, 
but try and s understand that it is in fact part of a scale. So if you're in E minor, and it doesn't matter whether you, you know, if you're playing Metallica or you're playing, uh, You know, you got something like that here. You know, you can throw it in just about anywhere and stuff like that. You know, it sounds really, really cool. So if you're used to playing more of that boxy idea of just going up and down your scale, which there's a ton of really cool stuff you can do with that too, but this, the point of this is it's moving us along this way. So it's giving something longer. Or if I was in E, uh, yeah, William, this will be in the, um, the club section of the, um, the guitar zoom page. It'll be in the club section so you can watch it again. It'll be there for everybody as soon as I'm done. Okay. Yep, that's the key. So that's what I'm doing with this thing. Now I can end it any way I want. If I want to go up to B, go into like a harmonic minor thing or whatever it is that I like to do, it's kind of kind of fun. But let me show you this too. Okay? Here's another thing that you can do. Same idea, guys. Okay? Same thing, same scenario. E minor, A minor, blah blah blah. Same thing. Okay? Now what we're going to do is instead of playing 7, 5, 4, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to move up to 12. And we're going to go 12, 10, 9. And now we're creating an A minor uh, triad, an A minor arpeggio. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little guy right there. So I'm on the fifth string. I'm doing the exact same thing I did down here for 7, 5, 4. I'm just moving it up here to 12. Okay? So I'm playing 12, 10, 9. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide up into the very last one I did, which was 14, 13, 12. So I took all the inside stuff and I threw it out. And I'm just doing this. And they're octaves, just like they were down here. So Brian says start in A. I'm starting on the note A on the 12th fret. Yep. And I might just end on an A, just like I did before. Or I might end on the note B if I was in the key of E minor. Or whatever, whatever I want to end on. The point is, is all I really did was I took this, it's like a slide ruler. I just took this big, long idea, this arpeggio, and I just shrunk it. Instead of doing 7, 5, 4, 9, 8, 7, blah, 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 to get all the way up there, I just took this and made an octave. That's all I need. Okay. Okay. So the more you do this, the easier it's going to get. Okay. The big thing is, is no matter what it is that you guys do, when you're playing guitar, it doesn't matter what it is. The goal is, is you got to sell it, right? You got to play it with confidence and with attitude. For me, your confidence and your attitude and what you're doing uh, has more to do with how many scales you know or how much theory you know or whatever, because if you don't have confidence in your playing and you don't have attitude in your playing, you can know all the scales in the world and it still doesn't really sound very musical. You know, the goal is to, to try and sell a, a feeling is what you're selling when it comes to music. And when I say selling, I don't mean making money. I mean, we are, we are creating music for someone to listen to, okay? Um, Jake, 10, it's 12, 10, 9 on the A. Yeah, you're just playing 12, 10, 9. And then you're going to the third, second, and first strings like we just did, the, the 14, 13, 12. It's the exact same one. So we're going... Just like here. And try and see how those are octaves, guys. Try and see how they're connecting. Okay? But that's the big thing, is, is always, like, we can sit and, and discuss all of our favorite guitar players 
and we we like different guitar players for different reasons, and that makes sense because it's what it's what compels us. It's it's why we play guitar. You know, for one person they love this guitar player, and somebody else doesn't care for that guitar player at all, and it doesn't matter. It's fine. But the most important thing that we do when we're playing is that we we have some element of confidence. Like when you go for for a bend. <laughs> When you play, the big thing is is being able... Now, again, what I just did right there sounds nothing like B.B. King. He wouldn't play like that. He wouldn't play with that kind of vibrato. He wouldn't play with that kind of, you know, attitude. He's got a different kind of attitude when he plays, you see? So we're all looking for something a little bit different when we're playing, okay? So it's really important to think about that kind of stuff when you're playing guitar, okay? Don't just get wrapped up in learning what it is, but learn how to sell it. Now, notice how, like, when I do that lick, what I can do is I can work my way up, and then right there I'm going to fall down the, the hill, right, or fall off the mountain. So I'm not concerned with... I'm not concerned with that rhythm thing. I'm just trying to make a nice sort of flowing movement and then right there and I might even just end on that G that sounds great just like that okay okay but if I wanted to keep going now you see right there I didn't go up here I just stopped at 12 right between 12 and 15, which I've got A minor and E minor both sitting there. And I can do whatever I want from there. But at least I've got this nice flowing lick that comes up this way. Okay? All right, so regarding this idea, let me know if, it, if it's something that kind of makes sense to you. Okay? If there's something in there that you could, you could find use for. Okay? And again, don't get stressed about... You know, one thing I want all of you to learn is when you're with somebody, when you're with another human being, another guitar player, a drummer, saxophone player, piano player, you've got to learn how to talk organically, okay? you got to learn how to talk organically to each other and go, oh, we're in this key or we're going to do this or whatever, and we want to be able to work through this. You know, my job isn't to try and stress you out with going too fast. That's not what I want. Um, but if you get the basic idea, then it's where do you want to go with this? So please let me know, okay? How is it going? Did that make sense to you? And is it something that you think you're going to be able to use in your playing? Because I would love to see some of the Friday night videos using something like this, okay? Um, John says, with some chord progressions behind it, this, the big thing with this, John, is that it's not reliant upon chord changes. The big thing here is, is that it's, it's more for anything that's predominantly E minor or predominantly E power chord, right? So if you've got a song that's going, it's not going to sound real great over something like that. You want something where you got a lot of E minor going, right? So... Or something, you know, which is real. You know, something like that. Something where you've got a lot of time. You know, something like that. Cool. Awesome. Looks like you guys got it. Good. Awesome. Let's see, challenge, cool. Okay, so we got a challenge, John's ready to go, that's good. Uh, Michelle says, if I got anything, uh, an exercise for moving up the neck well and more speedily, okay. Um, the big thing with moving up the neck is again, you're either gonna be moving blocked or you're gonna be moving, right, horizontally, right? I mean, those are the only two choices you have is some sort of vertical movement or some sort of horizontal movement. Where right now, we're moving a bit more horizontal. So the two choices you really have if you're trying to get up the fretboard fast is either you want minimal notes like we're doing right now with arpeggios, or you need to start learning how to put together Like, like patterns that, can, that you can develop speed in. 
right? So I can learn how to play a pattern. And move up the fretboard that way. But, but Michelle, that takes a little while to, to get used to that. Um, so there, there really isn't a great way of being able to move, Michelle. If you wanted to, what I would say, there's two things that you got to do to be able to move around the fretboard speedily. For me, those are the two things. Either I'm moving around with minimal notes, which is arpeggios or sweeps, or I'm moving around with a lot of notes, which is diatonic, right? Whether I'm picking them all or not, like I could... You know, I could do something where I'm picking less. Right? But I'm moving all over the fretboard. So there's no easy answer to that, Michelle, unfortunately. Um, either it's a technical way to get across because you've learned the pattern, or it's a creative way because you can see your fretboard. I guess that's what I would say. Okay? Randy says, when playing this lick, would it be the... would what would be the difference in ending a note on A minor versus C major? Well, if, if, your, if your primary chord winds up being a C at the end, what you're going to want to do is try and, try and land on something that has to do with C when you get to the end. Like C, the, anything of the C chord. You'd want to land, end on something that has to do with that. And again, I don't just always mean just a note. I like try and play a collection of notes so your brain is hearing the sound of a C chord or whatever it might be if it's an A minor you know then, then doing something that gives sort of an A minor sound we can look at it as just being one note though right Randy I if, if it's coming out to a C major I can emphasize the note C or the note E or the note G because those are part of the triad or I can try and emphasize the whole thing okay all right guys Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off here and I'm going to get this all organized and then I'm going to put it in the playlist in your club section um, on the Guitar Zoom site and that way you guys are going to be able to watch this anytime you want. Okay? So cool. All right. So everybody take care. Uh, stay positive. Keep practicing. I hope I didn't you know, make anybody worried with this, with this lesson. I hope this helped you a little bit for something new and unique to try and explore a little bit. And again, don't feel like you gotta do all of this, just take a section and start trying to make some sense of it, okay? Okay, all right, Mark, I'll check it out. I'll find your quiz on there. Um, cool, thank you guys. Thank you so much, and thank you, because I was gone all last week. I just started getting back into the swing of things today, because I got home Friday and the weekend I spent with my family. So today I'm back in, and I'll, I'll see you guys all on, on social media. So take care, God bless, and I'll speak to you soon, okay?